In this Excel tutorial video, we'll be working on the second part of experiment 15 in Chem 1B where we're doing the data analysis using the temperature data to calculate an activation energy. Recall that the rate constant is equal to a factor A times E to the minus activation energy over RT, where R is the gas constant, T is the temperature in Kelvin. And what we want to do in this part of the experiment is use our rate data and our temperature data to calculate the activation energy. We could do a, an exponential fit, but it's a lot more convenient to do a linear fit. So we're going to rearrange this equation so it gives us a linear equation, which is that taking the natural log of both sides, natural log of K, is equal to the natural log of A times E to the minus E sub A over RT. And we can use the properties of logarithms to break this apart. That This is natural log of A plus natural log of E to the minus E sub A over RT. We can now bring this down in front of the natural log, get rid of the exponent. It's equal to the natural log of A plus, or I should say minus, E sub A over RT times the natural log of E, and that's really equal to 1. So what we end up with is that the natural log of K is equal to minus E sub A over R times 1 over T, just rearranging that a little bit, plus the natural log of that factor A. And this is now in the format of Y is equal to M times X plus B. So in Excel, we want to generate a column of x data, which will be 1 over the temperature, and a column of y data that will be the natural log of k. And if we do a linear fit on that, our slope here will be equal to negative activation energy over r. So let's go ahead and do that now. If I'm working on the spreadsheet we were working on last time, I'm going to come over to the right here. And if you recall, our x data was 1 over the temperature. I'm going to go ahead and put that down here, actually. I'll do activation energy as our label. Okay. And then our Y data was the natural log of K. So our 1 over temperature, I can just do equals 1 divided by, and I already had the temperature entered in kelvins. If I didn't have it entered in kelvins, I need to do a conversion here. And the natural log of the rate is equal to, and the function for natural log, you can look this up, but the function is just ln, open parentheses, and there's our relative rate. That's not ln k. That's natural log of rate. Ah, same thing. I'm going to drag these down but I had a number of cells where I wasn't using that temperature information. I'm just going to delete them so they're empty. Okay. And coming over here, I can do a, a little bit of labeling here that I'm going to calculate a slope and intercept. I'm then going to calculate my um, <coughs> activation energy, and I'm going to end up doing that. The units that this is going to come out in are joules sorry, joules per mole. Okay, the slope, if you remember from the earlier videos, the function for that is SLOPE. Drag over the Y values, comma over the X values. For some things it matters that there's empty cells in the range. It does not matter for this function, so I'm going to be just fine there. Intercept. Now, I don't need the intercept for my calculation, but I want to make a plot with a fit line, and I'm going to need it for that part of the, the function. Now, if you recall, the activation energy, or the slope was equal to the negative active en en activation energy over R. The activation ener energy is going to be the negative slope times R. And if you recall, I had R over here in as a constant. And there's my, my answer in joules per mole. That's a pretty big number. I'm going to choose to convert this to kilojoules per mole. And I do that just by taking the previous number divided by 1,000. And I'm 
going to change the number of sig figs here. And, and we're in pretty good shape now. The last thing I want to do is a plot, but before I generate my plot, I know I'm going to want a fit in this plot, a linear fit. And I got that linear fit by taking the slope. I'm going to make it an absolute cell reference now, times my x value, mx, plus, and my intercept is an absolute reference. I'm going to go ahead and drag this down and get rid of the, the empty values in the middle there. If I go over this whole range, if I give the Excel plot function a, a large range like this, it will treat the first column as x data and the subsequent columns as multiple series, and that's what I want in my plot here. XY scatter, you always want to pick the XY scatter, and I'll start with just the dots. It's going to give me a plot that looks reasonable. The slope is negative. My title is going to be, say, experiment 15 temperature data. The value of my x-axis, if you recall, was 1 over t. And the volume of my y-axis was the natural log of the rate. Okay. The axes are fine. I don't like grid lines, so I'm going to turn those off. Um, you could leave them on. And I don't want to show a legend. And that's pretty good. I'm going to put it in as a new sheet. And there's my data. I'm going to select and delete that gray background because it makes it a little hard for me to see. Now this blue data was my raw data and the pink was my fit. Recall that data should be points with no lines connecting them. And the fit should be just a line with no points. Okay, so the data has points because it's actual measurements. The fit is a approximation of, of what the real values would be in a continuous area over that curve. And that's my Arrhenius plot right there. I've done the calculations using that independently in Excel, but the plot itself is that graphical representation of the natural log of the rate data versus the inverse temperature.